Ho! And welcome to Romance of the Three Games, Episode 6. We're starting off this week with the beginning of Act 3 of Wu's Musu Mode, entitled The Little Conqueror. First, we have a cutscene to get through. Let's see what's going on. Is that all you got? Oh, come on! <laughs> Soon say you're too far out. When will you ever learn? Sorry. Well... It's not as if anyone could push you back. Well, come on! Let's go! Yeah! What do you say you and I create a new empire, show you? Our empire. So there we saw Sun Sei, the son of Sun Jian, uh, who was nicknamed the Little Conqueror, hence the name of this act. He was known because he did have a tendency to conquer things, and we'll see him doing that during this stage. The story here says that Sun Jian has finished his battle with Dong Zhuo. Historically, he was the most successful general in the battle against Dong Zhuo. But at this stage, he is still actually under the command of Yuan Shu, uh, which the game and the book uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms doesn't really talk about. It's going to imply that Sun Jian is going home to his home territories and suddenly finding himself under attack because the lords uh, in his area have decided to take advantage of the chaos and attack him. But really, Yuan Shu ordered him to go to war with Liu Biao. And a lot of this uh, this act is based around the war with Liu Biao. So we're going to do the first stage, Assault on Liu Biao. And actually first, we're going to see my two initial attempts at doing this level. I was determined to play it not as Sun Jian, for reasons we'll see later on. At first I decided to pick Sun Shang Zhang, the daughter of Sun Jian, and one of the first female characters in Dynasty Warriors. I found her a little bit hard to use, she was particularly diff uh, difficult to control sorry, with the keyboard commands uh, because a lot of her attacks uh, rely on you uh, turning as you progress through the attacks, which you can't really do. And I failed the stage, Sun Jian died uh, during the battle, and we'll see why he died uh, once we get into my real playthrough of the stage. So now we're going to see what happens when you lose a stage, which I haven't shown you yet. <laughs> Your officer gets very disappointed, and you get a little uh, musical jingle to remind you how much of a failure you are. So I decided to replay the stage, playing as a character who would be more uh, able to deal with keyboard commands, and was perhaps a little bit more powerful. Who will I pick? Well, I hadn't unlocked many officers, but my favourite officer from the ones I did have was Zhou Yu, the guy we saw in the cutscene fighting alongside Sun Sei, one of Sun Sei's childhood friends and the great strategists of the Wu Empire. Things went a little better, uh, because this time, uh, I managed to fight all my way over to Sun Jian without him dying. Um, but unfortunately, Sun Jian only had one morale point, and all of the enemy officers on the field had a lot more. Which meant in order to prevent myself from losing the stage, I had to just stand by Sun Jian and fight with him to make sure he wouldn't die the second I walked away because of the weird morale bug. Eventually though, I had to leave, because we were never going to complete the stage if we just stood there in the castle. But it wasn't enough. I thought Sun Jian might hold out for a few minutes while I ran off to kill some enemy officers. Oh, I may die. But apparently not. His one morale point meant he just died. The second I uh, <laughs> walked far enough away for him not to be on the screen. And sure enough, I lost the stage. So, the second time in a row, I have lost. Not very good. Well, that means I have to try again. I decided to keep up with Zhou Yu, only first I went away and played a couple of other stages with him to make him more powerful, to give me a little bit of an edge in the battle to come. So now what we're going to see is my true playthrough. First, yet again, we are going to switch over to Zhou Yu. If you were looking very closely, you would have noticed his stats are higher and he's unlocked a new item slot. So hopefully I'll be able, to be able to defeat some of the enemy officers a little faster this time. I'll talk you through what actually happens in this stage, which will uh, make it a little clearer what was going on in these last two clips, uh, and why I seem to be having so much trouble. I take the Tortoise Amulet, which isn't very powerful at the moment, as my backup item. My bodyguards have leveled up a bit uh, since last time. I'm currently training them using the bow, because when you train them using the bow, their stats increase at a greater rate, at the expense of them being pretty much useless in the battles. But I decided that uh, since my bodyguards are still quite weak, they're not making that much of a difference in the battle, so it's okay to make them a little weaker for the sake of them becoming stronger later on. Let's check the unit info. So here's the first problem. We begin with a couple of uh, four and three level morale units, whereas the enemy's morale are all higher on pretty much all the fronts. 
which means from the very beginning all of your units are going to be losing troops and after just a couple of minutes into the battle the officers will be defeated which means you have to act very fast if you don't want your entire force to fall apart from the very beginning. You need to do something about that morale problem and luckily whilst I was playing through this level for the third time I found a way to solve the problem with morale. So from the beginning I have to fight the enemy officer Huang Zhu who was one of the enemy officers that Sun Jian's forces did defeat historically during the war uh, with Liu Biao. As I said the war with Liu Biao was done on Yuan Shu's behest because Sun Jian was still a subordinate of the uh, ruler Yuan Shu at this stage. He was operating out of uh, Henan province I believe. A lot of the time people think Sun Jian was the governor of Cheng Sha. I think that's what it says in Romance of the Three Kingdoms. He was actually uh, the governor of Henan province which is in the same area but whatever. So right around now Sun Jian rushes off chasing Lu Gong which is a reference to something that happens in the novel where Lu Gong was carrying a message from Liu Biao's forces and Sun Jian decided to hunt him down to stop the message getting through but unfortunately got isolated and was uh, killed by ambush troops. Uh, so this is kind of a reference to that in the game. Sun Jian gets trapped inside a castle and you are told to go and save him. In the previous playthroughs I went straight to save him however this third time I did things a little bit differently and this proved to be much more effective. Before I went to save him, I moved north to save Hung Gai, who was fighting with a couple of enemy officers uh, who had greatly more morale than him, which meant if I left them alone, uh, Hung Gai would die. Now this would be uh, a little bit irresponsible because it would mean I'm leaving Sun Jian to die. However, for every enemy officer I kill, Sun Jian is gaining an extra morale point due to uh, an event scripted into the game which causes him to do this, which means by leaving him alone and defeating these enemy officers, I actually am helping Sun Jian because his morale is constantly increasing and making it take longer for him to die, giving me more time to save him. After I defeated a couple of enemy officers, I decided to finally go and uh, link up with Sun Jian. I fought my way into the castle and went to see how he was doing. He was surrounded by enemy troops but he still had full health and was fighting fairly successfully. The question now is, does Sun Jian have enough morale uh, to keep fighting on his own? Fortunately, it turned out that he did. <laughs> and as you can see, I ran off right back to the corner of the map to save Sun Se, who was about to die. However, while I was away, Yuan Shao showed up on the map, so I had to go back to save him. Yuan Shao, <laughs> not to save him, sorry, to defeat him. And he challenged me to a duel just to make things extra easy. This was the weak point in my plan, because if Yuan Shao uh, had managed to get his way inside the castle, Sun Jian would have been dead fast because he was a morale 8 unit, whereas Sun Jian was still only around 5. So now the duel begins. Let's see how Zhou Yu does. Managed to block one of Yuan Shao's weird bounding charge attacks and get a little attack in, not bad. Now I start pressing him into the corner, trying to get an attack. Get another hit on him. Now I try to cheaply hit with a stun attack and he just randomly uses his Musu on me, pretty annoying. So now the health bars are about even. <laughs> he copies me in doing a jumping move and pays the price. Now Yuan Shao is on the ropes. Unfortunately I miss with my third level charge attack so I don't quite kill him. But, <laughs> but then with a little cheeky temptation of the block I get him to charge up an attack and take him out in the process. Have disgraced me. Yuan Shao is disgraced and flees the field and this means his entire unit is going to go down from 8 morale to 0 so I don't have to worry them, worry about them anymore. It looks like Hong Gai took quite a beating while I was away but it's okay. After that the stage was pretty easy because all of my units had such high morale. Why do you disturb Jing? Only fools wage war so trivially. So Liu Biao is calling out Zhou Yu for being a warlord. Let's see what his response is. In this chaos, you must fight to survive. Not really a good excuse for invading them. He was kind of asking them why they were trying to uh, take over Liu Biao's territory. And Zhou Yu just says it's because he's fighting to survive. Doesn't fully make logical sense, but oh well. Zhou Yu was supposed to be a genius, so perhaps there was some wisdom to those words that I didn't fully appreciate. So now all I have to do is defeat Liu Biao himself, who's sitting right back here in the corner of the map. Unfortunately, my fight against Liu Biao is a little bit incompetent, um, which was annoying because it would have been a good end to what went what was a rather good stage 
for me to actually defeat the enemy commander with a little bit of finesse, but instead I managed to get hit by all his bodyguards about a hundred thousand times. Meanwhile my bodyguards just stood at the back firing arrows at point blank range, which um, doesn't really help. They fire extremely infrequently. I spent a little time trying to get them to kill people, and you'd often have your line of six bodyguards all firing arrows into a group, and you'd see about a couple of arrows go in there every uh, ten seconds or so. They were firing much more slowly than they were reloading. A little bit frustrating to watch them just aiming for half a minute before they fire, but uh, I guess the game would be unbalanced if they were firing at a rapid rate. Still trying to take on Liu Biao, <laughs> his bodyguards and he himself really doing some damage to me. Now we enter a power battle and I think this is the first time we're going to see the dual power battle uh, where we both uh, suffer the consequences of the weapon deadlock and uh, I think it drains our Musu bars and makes us uh, vulnerable to attack. Unfortunately that means it's really bad for me because uh, his bodyguards can attack me whereas for him that doesn't really mean anything. I use Zhou Yu's true Musu but it's incredibly difficult, difficult to control. I don't really hit him at all. Very disappointing. But now managed to pick up a little bit of health and uh, take him down. Impressive. <laughs> Impressive indeed, good sir. So finally, on my third attempt, I managed to complete this damn level. Pretty hard stage. I'm not even halfway through the game. <laughs> and there's a stage I had to attempt many times. Uh, I wonder if there'll be any more. So let's have a look at how the morale changed throughout the stage. You can see Sun Jian started to drop his morale right at the beginning. But as I take out these enemy officers, it jumps back up to like 5 there, giving me time to run off across the map, take out these other enemy reinforcements that show up, and then go on to defeat the enemies. Those enemy reinforcements showing up was the, pro the problem in the second time I tried it, because they show up with 8 morale points, and because they were uh, constantly sending troops in to fight Sun Jian, I had to stay with Sun Jian to stop those 8 morale troops from killing him, stopping me from going out and killing the officers, which would have removed that morale, so it was a kind of a endless problem. A little bit of experience, not too much, and I'm going to get a rank up, but no reward for that rank up unfortunately. Not quite a weapon level up, though got a fair bit of weapon experience, and for the bodyguards they rank up to level 5. Uh, the maximum level is level 20, so they're a quarter of the way to being legendary bodyguards. Anyway, it's time to move on to extreme mode, and if I thought extreme mode would give me a little bit of an easier challenge than Musu mode was, then I guess I'm mistaken. We'll see what happens in this stage. Because it's mission 5, we get a special level. Every level that is a multiple of 5 in extreme mode is a special one. So this time, it is the Kingdom Creation mission, where if you uh, complete the stage, you get your own little kingdom. And I believe the consequence of this is that if you do a future stage inside your kingdom, you get better prices in the shop. Speaking of shops, while I'm there, I decide to buy the Plain Harness to give me a horse, and the Eye of Heaven, which detects hidden enemy units. Wasn't sure if it's going to be useful, but it was so cheap, I might as well try it. I was considering buying some startup items. I usually don't. Uh, because it's kind of a waste of money, they're very expensive for what you get. But I decided to buy one, just to be safe. So as I said last time, I'm switching back to the Lightning Orb now at level 2, because the Vorpal Orb wasn't really impressing me, at least the level 1 Vorpal Orb wasn't. Thought I'd go back to try and good old Lightning Orb. My objective is to defeat all the enemy officers, not just the enemy commander. The enemy commander is Shahudun, who's not actually on the map yet, uh, so I guess we'll find out what that means later on. There's a couple of enemy officers around with high morale. Luckily, since I barely have any troops, morale isn't an issue. All I have to do is push forward and take them out. Start on a horse, this is the result of buying the plane harness, so that's going to speed things up as I move around this uh, rather large map. First thing I did was move forward and take out Gan Ning. Took a tiny bit of damage in defeating him. Uh, oh, and <laughs> Zhou Tai actually got the kill. Pretty cheeky. So that's a uh, weapon experience lost for me. You'll see that actually happens quite a bit in this stage. Now I moved on, and you know what's going to happen here. Oh yes, I found some health. Why else would I be showing you footage of me breaking open boxes? Uh, yeah, so I managed to get up to full health. Excellent work. Will I manage to keep that full health? Well, we'll see. As I moved on, Shahu Dune returned. And I thought, well, that's not a big deal, he's down there in the corner, I can just kind of ignore him for now, but uh, luckily, or unluckily for me, I didn't notice that he's actually moving, uh, as well as coming in 
with a couple of support officers. I think there are three or four additional officers that come in with Shahudun and advance in front of him. Uh, and I'm going to have to deal with them all simultaneously very soon. In the meantime, though, I've got Li Su to deal with. I noticed Ho Shuang was standing behind him. Ho Shuang was a subordinate officer, so I decided to defeat him first so I can get the startup item, because he will retreat if I defeat Li Su too quickly. Things are going extremely well, as you can see, and I'm absolutely rampaging through these officers and troops. And actually, Zhou Tai kills Li Su, so that's the second officer that Zhou Tai has killed stolen from me, further denying me of weapon experience. How inconvenient. At least I still get the stat up. So now I was wondering what to do. I could advance on and defeat the enemy troops to the north, or deal with what seemed to be becoming a developing situation in the south, and more and more enemy troops are rushing towards me. I decided to head for the southern option, and as I hacked through them, two officers suddenly ran at me. I needed to do something to take them both out. Oh, and I masterfully dismount them both with my halberd. And now I'm going to have to start dealing with them, but I noticed Shahu Duin is coming up right behind them. Now I'm being spammed by all these enemy officers. I use my Musu to try and clear a little bit of space. It doesn't work so well, but it moves me forward enough to escape from that little death trap. Now I'm trying to draw off enemy officers uh, so I can fight them one at a time. Luckily, Jahudun is distracted by my lady guards at the bottom of the hill. And now, unfortunately, my lady guards are going to sacrifice themselves to give me enough time to defeat these enemy officers. <laughs> A noble sacrifice and the end of Lubu's little cadre of lady guards. Very unfortunate. The plan worked though. These two enemy officers were drawn off uh, from Shahudun. One of them is one of Shahudun's subordinate officers. But they're uh, both going to go down pretty damn easy pretty much juggling them with my kill everything move. And finally I get two kills which actually give me weapon experience. <laughs> Zhou Tai is almost dead if you look closely, so I need to be careful. Now Jacques Houdoun and another officer ride up on horses. Uh, they're supported by a massive army of archers behind them, so I decided to move back uh, rather than face them while being bombarded with arrows. Zhou Tai distracts Xia Haodun and dies as a result, giving me just enough time to take out that other, other, other officer, sorry. Xia Haodun and I, weapon deadlock, and we, uh, we draw, and then we start fighting each other. I really need to take out the rest of his support troops so I can focus on a one-on-one -on -one duel with Xia Haodun. Zhou Tai dropped a life up 50 when he died, which was very nice of him, so I've got back up to full health now. But I think things are going to go kind of badly for my health in just a few seconds if I remember correctly. There it is. Oh, <laughs> I took four hits before managing to press the Musu button uh, and lost a little chunk of my life bar there. Very annoying. Farewell. The last of my lady guard dies off on the other side of the map. So now Lubu is literally all alone. I cheekily take another hit there, uh, but it doesn't stagger me luckily. Uh, but now I'm getting into a little bit of a rhythm taking down Jiahodun, so he's going to go down fast. <laughs> you can see the massive army of archers has moved up and is bombarding me. So I decided to move off and try and deal with these archers, just to take some revenge. But there's actually so many archers, I can't even walk towards them because of the sheer level of arrows that are flying into me. And this is going to be slowly chipping my health away. This was not good. This is the sort of situation in Dynasty Warriors that makes someone very angry. I mean, look at this. I can't even hit them. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> trying to swing the halberd, but getting hit by so many arrows, he can even move his arms. Anyway, I finally defeat them. Now the stage has pretty much nothing left to it. All I have to do is defeat Shun Quan, who's sitting up right at the top of the map. First, I went around the entire map opening boxes, trying to find more health, but <laughs> I didn't find any, despite opening tens of boxes. So I decided to just screw it and take on Sun Quan. Unfortunately it was my lightning that actually killed him, which means yet again I will not be getting weapon experience, so tons of weapon experience lost out on this level due to other stuff killing the enemy officers. Very inconvenient, but it is a victory, and it's a victory in a kingdom battle. So Lu Bu, uh, who is now literally just a one-man army, owns his own piece of China, his own province, I think it's Hanzhong province. And we'll see if this has any consequences later on. I believe every five stages you have to do a level relating to your kingdom, either defending it from invaders or expanding it into other provinces. So if I manage to survive another five stages, we'll see that. My weapon leveled up, which was pretty damn sweet, and I got like 5,000 gold. So the after rewards of this difficult battle were pretty good. Anyway, it's time to move on to extreme mode where Yan Mei's empire will be continuing its campaign to take over China. 
first the political phase. Some not particularly interesting policies uh, were posited here uh, by the various officers. Um, I wasn't really uh, willing to do any of them, but then I actually realised I don't have enough money to do any of them either, so it doesn't even matter making the decision. I decided to just try it to see if it would let me do it without the money, but no, it turns out you do actually need the money. So I had to reject all of their ideas. <laughs> Liu Yong offers me a fun date to go and kill some people. Uh, it was tempting to do that, but it would be much more advantageous to me to use this turn to expand my empire into that of Liu Zhang, because his capital region is now adjoining with the Nanman provinces, and if I capture his capital region, I get all of his territory as well. He has two other provinces which means I can get three provinces in one battle. So unfortunately, Liu Yong, I'm going to have to ignore you to take this opportunity. I'm going to be taking all of my officers, and we're going to see if the star officer of the last battle, Yu Mi, can put in an equally good performance. I'll tell you in advance that you are going to be impressed by Yu Mi. Because this battle was kind of important, I decided to take an item, didn't have much on the real items front, but I could take an orb. I took the lightning orb, the one I'm familiar with, just to see how Yan Mei dealt with having extra lightning damage. <laughs> see if she becomes even more powerful than she already is. The objective is to kill Liu Zhang, he isn't on the map. Again, because this is a ruler battle, like last week, we're not going to see the enemy ruler until you've got near to the enemy main camp. So we'll have to wait to see him show up. Yu Mi begins yet again with high morale than everyone else and with no troops. But the enemy starts with quite high morale as well, so Yumi is going to have to be careful. His one-man attack plan might not work so well. This battle very quickly devolved into a competition between Yan Mei and Yumi for who could do the most damage to the enemy force. First things first, I moved forward and started capturing a couple of enemy bases. Got myself 50 kills early on, not too bad. Around the same time, Yumi uh, <laughs> took over an enemy base. I think this means we're on one all of the bases uh, to begin with, but this base right here I'm going to take, that's going to get me up to two bases pretty quickly. I moved on after that base and now I'm fighting with the forces of Liu Han who is defending an enemy base. He comes out to meet me, and I very easily cut through his army. We get a message saying that Liu Zhang army reinforcements are approaching uh, back at the base I just took, which means I have one minute to clear up my business here and go back to defeat them. Luckily, Liu Han's going to go down pretty easy. <laughs> His measly sword swipes are just like nothing in comparison to Yan Mei's massive play. While I'm fighting though, Yu Mi gets his second base, so we're now 2 for 2 on uh, base capturing competition. I send Liu Han back to the main camp, and now I have to rush back to stop the enemy reinforcements from dealing damage in the bases I've just taken. Oh, but first, <laughs> I decided to take up these archers because they were being so annoying to me. I had to get just a little bit of revenge. <laughs> anyway, now I really am going to go back and take up the enemy reinforcements. Two enemy officers uh, spawn on top of one of my bases, so I'm going to have to get there before they uh, rampage through the base. Luckily, since I'd already started walking that way, it didn't take too long. Let's see what's going on in this base. One of my own lieutenant generals, who I rarely see, seems to be fighting with Kao Ren. Yu Mi has begun his advance, wildly shouting at his invisible army. Kao Ren will defeat me. <laughs> no, Liu Pi will defeat me. So the enemy officers start arguing about who's going to defeat me. Uh, it seems they were so distracted by this argument that I managed to kill all of their troops and kill them with relative ease. So now I had it in the back of my mind that I had to defeat these enemy officers quickly because I could see on the map you me just rampaged forwards and, and you know, went straight into an enemy base that I was going to try and take. So I got the impression that he was trying to one up me by going into the base that was naturally on my route through the level just to capture it so I couldn't. I thought that was incredibly cheeky of you me. So after I defeated the enemies around here I decided to start heading over and try and take him out. Oh yes, these 200 troops from the Yong'an army decided to uh, show up. I don't know which unit those troops went into, perhaps Liu Zhang's unit or something, but uh, 200 troops isn't very many. In this game, for every enemy you kill on the enemy force, they lose 5 troops, which means killing 50 troops deducts 200. So it's the equivalent to undoing 50 of my 160 kills. Not really going to be a battle-changing situation. 
I'm rushing to where Yumi is fighting in the base. As I go, some of the enemy officers begin to respawn. Liao Hua, the enemy officer, dies somewhere deep in my territory. And the reason he died was because Yumi's forces uh, took that enemy base and cut off his supplies. So Yumi is now on uh, what are we, three bases, yes, three bases, and I am on three bases as well. So I think it's three all at this stage, can't quite remember. There's the man himself wildly slashing at some enemies. I decided to just move forward and take on the enemy camp myself, lest Yumi go and do it. Luckily Yumi decided to concern himself with attacking one of the enemy bases that was out of supply in the southwest corner of the map, along with Mahjong. So while those guys wasted time uh, attacking the pretty much pointless bases, I took on the enemy main camp. Had to slice my way through a fair few enemy officers, because they kept respawning. We saw their Mahjong uh, manage to take one of those bases. Now I think I'm about to encounter Liu Zhang himself. If I can defeat him, I'll win this stage. <laughs> Liu Zhang's troops don't seem to spend uh, much time in the living realm these days. Liu Zhang himself comes out, along with Liao Hua. It's a good idea for me to kill Liao Hua because I haven't killed him yet in this stage. Um, you need to defeat every enemy officer at least once in order to maximize your experience. If you defeat an enemy officer more than once, I don't believe it gives you any more experience than killing them once. Although, uh, feel free to correct me on that, I believe that is the case in Empires. Liu Hua goes down, and now I just have to take out Liu Shang. <laughs> While I'm doing so, Yumi takes over an enemy base. So he is actually now uh, on four bases, whilst I'm on three. He has beat me in the base-taking race. And he got 50 kills. Still not really uh, edging on my 274 kills, but still, that one-man army is really putting in a performance. He's definitely the second in command, even though he's only a lieutenant. He's the uh, superstar of Yan Lei's force. Liu Zhang almost dies, but then Cao Ren comes in to save him. I give Cao Ren a little bit of my musu. I decided I was going to try and kill Cao Ren before I killed Liu Zhang, just as a humiliation. Uh, but unfortunately Liu Zhang ran forwards onto my sword and killed himself before I could do that. Very unfortunate. But at least the stage has been won. Chengdu has been captured and Liu Zhang's empire is now controlled by Yan Mei. So we'll see on the battle map in a moment how much extra territory we're going to gain. So I've picked up a ton of experience. 600 casualties, not so bad. I do need to start replenishing the amount of troops in my army. The advantage of fighting with so many units they don't have troops in them is that there's no one to lose, so the, the casualties on your side are quite low, whereas the enemy is losing thousands of troops. We captured tons of enemy officers. I don't believe we're going to have any money at all, so we're not going to have <laughs> any of these enemy officers in our force at the end of this, if I remember correctly, which is unfortunate. Uh, however, because I already have six officers and you can only ever deploy six officers in the battle, I don't really need extra officers. Uh, having more would just mean I have more choice, more choices, and uh, if someone died or was captured, I could replace them. But I'm okay for officers, really, so it's uh, it's not such a bad thing. You can see my emperor is now uh, controlling a fairly large amount of China, perhaps uh, I don't know, maybe a quarter of it. Not bad. And as a reward for conquering so much land, we get a exciting cutscene. The empire is growing nicely. Thank you for telling me that. I noticed. We can make our kingdom even greater. That may be the case. Do you have any suggestions as to how? No? Just an awkward silence. So my subordinate officers are uh, quick to inform me that I have built an empire and that I could make it bigger. Uh, really good advice. Uh, I really see why I pay those guys so much to be with me. Yanmei levels up. So now she's even more powerful, as if she wasn't powerful enough. Ridiculous. We'll she see how she does uh, next time when we return to Empire's mode. So that's all for this episode of Romance of the Three Games. I hope you have enjoyed watching it and enjoyed seeing me struggle through those uh, first two stages and then have a little bit of a field day with Yanmei in Empire's mode. There'll be more action from all of the different modes next time on Romance of the Three Games.